women mate across dominance hierarchies and up, socioeconomically speaking. And on average, across cultures, women go for men who are about four to five years older. You know, it varies. In the Scandinavian countries, that's shrunk a little bit, but not that much. And in other cultures, it's bigger. I would say that depends to some degree on difficulty of establishing economic independence. Because in richer countries, it's easier to have enough economic independence if you're a male to be a useful participant in the process of having children. But it doesn't matter, cross-culturally, it's still across and up where men mate across and down. They don't care much about socioeconomic status. It doesn't seem to be part of their selection method, um, generally speaking. I think that part of that is also that the ability of women to select for, for male health. It's something like that because it isn't that only that, because if you're healthy and energetic, you're much more likely to be successful, because it's very hard to be successful if you're ill, obviously, because the competition is just too high. And both genders, both sexes, select each other for attractiveness, both select for intelligence, both select for personality, although the, the different, there are differences there in terms of what's, what's stressed. Now, one of the things about human beings that's unique is that human females are picky maters, they're choosy. Uh, they're also sneaky because you can't tell when they're ovulating and with uh, many other female animals you know They have hidden ovulation and they're choosy and they tend to choose Men who are more successful in the dominance hierarchy Well, there, there's a shock I mean, if you have a choice Why not, if you pick someone who's at the bottom of the competence hierarchy Well, that's probably not going to work out very well for you And since women bear the burden of reproduction it's perfectly reasonable for them to search out someone who's going to be helpful. So, productive, fair, generous. And you know, when you think of a dominance hierarchy, you might think, well, it's the powerful guy, the aggressive guy, say, that rises to the top of the dominance hierarchy. And that's not true. It's not even true among chimps. Like, you can get a chimp tyrant, but then what happens is other chimps gang up on him and tear him to pieces. And they don't do it nicely. They don't do it nicely. And the chimps that tend to maintain their dominance for long periods of time have a pretty wide network of friends, roughly speaking, with whom they engage in reciprocal interactions like grooming. And they actually pay a lot of positive attention to the female chimps, who have their own hierarchy, by the way, and to the, their offspring. So they're like baby kissing politicians. You know, and it's certainly the case that female humans prefer creative men. So, and no wonder, of course. We wouldn't be creative if that wasn't the case. So then imagine that there's two primary forces of evolutionary selection operating on us, and they're not really the natural world, which is what people always think, like the environment, you know, the, the animals and the trees and nature. But it isn't nature that's selected us. It's two other things. Well, partly. It's two other things. So one is the dominance hierarchy, the male dominance hierarchy, is one of the primary mechanisms of selection. So it's like, well, uh, Women are faced with a hard choice, which guy to go after, right? That's a hard choice. And so, what that means, at least in part, is that we have adapted to be better and better at attaining status in dominance hierarchies over God only knows how long a period of time. And that doesn't mean just power. You know, it might mean cognitive flexibility, because you could imagine dominance hierarchy A, dominance hierarchy B, dominance hierarchy C. Okay, so if like, if you're really successful, you climb up dominance hierarchy A. Right, but you, B and C, no, if you happen to land in those, you'd just be a failure. So, then you could say, the ideal human being is someone who can climb to the top of a dominance hierarchy, no matter what the dominance hierarchy is. We've evolved such that success across the set of possible dominance hierarchies is the target. And I think that's why we have general intelligence. 